In this video we're going to cover acid strength and pH. So um, different acids have uh, different strengths. Some are strong acids, some are weak acids, and so we can measure the relative strength of different acids by um, calculating what we call the pH. And so that's just a measurement of how acidic or basic a solution is. And the, uh, the calculation is pH equals the negative log of the uh, concentration of H3O plus. So remember H3O plus is what's generated anytime an H plus is in water because H2O grabs the H plus from the acid and it turns into H3O plus. So the acid donates H plus, the water accepts the H plus and it turns into H3O plus. So we can always calculate the pH of the solution by figuring out how much H3O plus there is. So um, a pH that is equal to 7, we call that neutral. And the reason that a pH equal to 7 is neutral is because um, when water is, when the concentration of H plus and OH minus is equal, then we call, we say that water is neutral. And at 25 degrees Celsius, we saw in the last video that KW is equal to 1 times 10 to the minus 14 at 25 degrees C. So that means that the, um, the concentration of H3O plus is 10 to the minus 7 molar and the concentration of OH minus is 10 to the minus 7 molar so they're equal. So when, the, when, uh, when they're equal and the concentration of H3O plus is 10 to the minus 7 then the pH equals 7. Negative log 10 to the minus 7 equals 7. So we call that neutral. That's when there is not, the, the acid and base are perfectly balanced. I don't have any more acid or any more base. They're, they are perfectly balanced. If the H3O plus concentration becomes greater than the OH minus concentration, they're not both equal to 10 to the minus 7 anymore, then I call that an acidic solution. And conversely, if the OH minus concentration becomes greater than the H3O plus concentration, then we call that a basic solution. And so acidic solutions have a pH that's less than 7, and basic solutions have a pH that's greater than 7. So I can calculate the pH if I know the H3O plus concentration, and I can calculate the H3O plus concentration if I know the pH. H3O plus equals 10 to the negative pH power. That would be my exponent, is the pH, uh, pH times negative 1. So here um, are some different pH values for different substances. Stomach acid, pretty acidic, has a pH of 1 up to 3 maybe, about the same acidity as lemons and limes. Soft drinks are pretty acidic too. Um, plums, wine, apple, up to rainwater. Even rainwater is generally a bit acidic because um, as the rain falls through the sky it interacts with carbon dioxide and the water interacting with carbon dioxide creates what we call carbonic acid so as the water falls through the sky and reacts with gases that are in the atmosphere many of those gases have oxygen and so many of those interactions create oxy acids and that's a natural process and so rainwater is generally a bit acidic Blood is generally a little bit basic, 7.3, a little bit higher than 7. Um, and then eggs and milk, uh, all the way up to um, a 4% sodium hydroxide solution. Again, this is the kind of stuff that's in drain cleaner, so very basic. So here's the pH scale. It goes from uh, 0 to 14, which is not technically true. We can actually have substances, solutions that have negative pH and we can have solutions that have greater than 14. So um, some solutions can go down to negative 1, negative 2, negative 3 pH and some very basic solutions can go up to 15.7. Uh, 15, 15 um, which really has to do with the acidity of H3O plus and we'll talk about that in a little bit. So the pH scale, 7 is neutral, all the way up to 14 being basic, all the way down to 0 being very acidic. And we can see how that relates to the concentration of H+. 
But when the concentration of H plus is 10 to the minus 7 in pure water at 25 degrees C, we call that neutral, and the pH is 7. If I get a little bit more H plus, so I go from 10 to the minus 7 to 10 to the minus 6, now the pH is 6. So this is the nature of the logarithmic scale. The, the pH, the going up by 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, is really going up by these exponents, right? The logarithm focuses on the exponent. So when I get down to 10 to the minus 0, this is 1, right? So a 1 molar solution of H plus has a pH of 0, 1 molar. And if I have a 10 to the minus 1 times 10 to the minus 14 molar solution of H plus, then that's very, very basic. So uh, the concentration of H plus has to do with how acidic and basic a solution is. Um, another way of expressing the acidity or basicity of a solution is by measuring what we call the pOH. So the pH is how much H do I have? How much H plus or H3O plus? Because remember, those are equivalent. So when I'm looking at the pOH, I'm just solving how much OH do I have? Because remember, H plus and OH minus kind of come as a pair. So maybe I know how much H plus I have, or maybe I know how much OH minus I have. If so, I can calculate the pH or the pOH. And so the pOH is just defined as the negative log of the OH minus concentration. Um, remember, in pure water, at 25 degrees C, the concentration of OH minus and H plus is 10 to the minus 7. So in pure water, the pH is 7. And in pure water, at 25, the pOH is 7. pH and pOH both equal 7 because the concentration of OH minus and the concentration of H plus is equal. So um, pH and pOH scales, how do they relate? Well, pH plus pOH always equals 14. So in pure water, when pOH is 7 and pH is 7, that's 7 plus 7 equals 14. But what we can see is they always kind of have this um, uh, this relationship where they're kind of opposed to each other. When the pH goes down by 1, then the pOH goes up by 1. 7 plus 7 equals 14. If the pH goes down by 1 to 6, the pOH has to compensate by going up by 1. 6 plus 8 is 14. If the pH goes down by 2 to 5, then the pOH has to compensate by going up by 2. 5 plus 9 is 14. 4 plus 10, 14, 14, 14, 14, 14. So whatever the pH is, I always know what the pOH is. Because if the pH is 10, the pOH has to be 3 because this plus this has to equal 14. So these guys have this kind of complementary relationship, the pH and the pOH. And they have that complementary relationship because the H plus and the OH minus have that complementary relationship in water. If I have a perfectly balanced amount of H plus and OH minus in pure water, and then I add extra H plus because I've added an acid, then what's going to happen? Well, that extra H plus is going to react with some of the OH minus I had in water to make more water, which reduces the OH minus concentration. So as the OH minus concentration goes down and the H plus concentration goes up, that makes this solution get more acidic. And as the H plus concentration goes up, then the OH concentration goes down by the same amount. So H plus and OH minus are connected to each other. Whatever happens to one, the opposite happens to the other. So again, pH plus pOH equals 14 at 25 degrees C. So if I know one, I always know the other. We'll go over some of this math in a little bit. So another way of expressing the strength of an acid or base is by um, the, uh, expressing what we call the pK, the pKa or the pKb. So when we talk about the pH, we're talking about what happens to that acid when it's in a solution. But the pH of a solution doesn't tell me anything about the strength of the acid that's in it. If I have a dilute solution, then the pH will be higher. 
if I have a very concentrated solution of that acid, then the pH will be lower, which doesn't tell me a lot about whether that's a strong or weak acid. So um, pH is really a measurement of a solution, not of an acid itself. It's what happens when that acid goes into water. pKa and pKb is really a measurement of the strength of the acid or base all by itself without having to put it in water, without, without thinking about what its concentration might be. So um, when we talk about acids being strong or acids being weak, we have to think about the equilibrium, whether the equilibrium lies on the reactant side or the product side. So the stronger the acid, the smaller the pKa, and the weaker the acid, the larger the pKa. And um, similarly to the base, the stronger the base, the smaller the pKb. So how do we know if an acid is strong or weak? Well, a strong acid is a strong electrolyte, which means that if I put HCl into water, then at equilibrium, there is n really no HCl left. It has all become H3O plus and Cl minus. So a strong acid is one where I start with 100% H plus and 0% initially and then at equilibrium I have 0% H plus and 100% oops and 100% H plus and 100% Cl minus because this thing has broken apart completely this is what a strong acid does A strong acid donates it, a strong acid donates 100% of its H pluses to the solution. Um, so a strong acid is a strong electrolyte, which means an electrolyte is a solution that can conduct electricity, and the solution conducts electricity because it has a high concentration of pluses and minuses. When I put this into solution, I get lots of pluses and minuses out of it. A strong base is also a strong electrolyte. When I put a strong base into water, it dissociates 100%, and I have 100% OH minus, and whatever the conjugate, whatever the counter ion is to the uh, OH minus, or whatever the base may be, if it's one that doesn't have OH minus in it. So strong acids do this. And so let me just make this a bit more generic up here so I can use it twice. A minus HA. So a weak acid, conversely, is going to do this. I start with 100%. Oh, I guess I don't need to do that again. I start with 100% up there, and a weak acid is, let's say I have 90% left, and only 10% of it has fallen apart. So a strong acid at equilibrium, there is no HA left. It has completely fallen apart and become H plus and A minus. A weak acid, I start off with 100% HA, and at equilibrium, I still have like 90% HA left. Very, very little of it fell apart. 10% H plus, 10% A minus. 90% of this compound did not fall apart. The H and the A are still stuck together. The H plus cannot go make H3O plus because it's still stuck to the A. So the difference between strong and weak acids and bases is how much acid do I have at equilibrium? Did the whole thing fall apart to give me 100% H plus? Or did only a little bit of it fall apart to give me 10% H plus, for example? So here's a... Uh, visual representation. HCl is completely stuck together before it goes in the water, right? But then when it goes into the water, it has completely dissociated. There is no HCl left. There's no green ball stuck to a gray ball in the water. All the gray balls that were stuck to the chloride, 
they've all now been transferred to water. So all of the H pluses now exist as H3O plus. That's what a strong acid does. And a weak acid, HF looks like this, where the two balls are stuck together. And at equilibrium, lots of those HFs still exist. Look, in fact, most of the molecules in the water are HF. Only two of them fell apart. This one turned into H plus and F minus, and this one turned into H plus and F minus. All the others are still HF. So HCl is a strong acid. It makes lots of pluses and minuses. It's a strong electrolyte. HF is a weak acid. It doesn't make very many pluses and minuses. It's a weak electrolyte. So the strong acids, um, to determine whether an acid is strong or weak is actually pretty easy because there are millions of different kinds of acids, millions, and you will be able to tell if they are strong or weak by the end of this chapter, all 20 million of them or whatever the number may be because the only strong acids are these six. There are six strong acids and there are 19,999 whatever number of weak acids. Almost every acid there is is a weak acid. There are only six that are strong. So I will ask you, I'll put an acid on the test and say, is this a weak acid or is this a strong acid? And you'll go, man, how could I possibly know that? Well, memorize the six strong acids, HCl, HBr, HI. Those are all in order in the periodic table, right? It goes CLBRI, all down a column, the halogens. So those halogen acids are strong acids. But don't get tricked because the column goes like this, right? F, C, L, B, R, I. And these three are strong. But HF is actually a weak acid. And we'll talk, we could talk about that later. We'll talk about why later. But C, L, B, R, and I are strong. There's three of your strong acids right there. That's half of them. The other three are oxy acids, those that are stuck with oxygen. So nitric acid, HNO3, that's a strong acid. Perchloric acid, HClO4. And sulfuric acid, H2SO4. So these three are pretty easy to remember. These three are a little bit tougher to remember. But there's only six to memorize altogether. And after you memorize these six strong acids, then you can always tell whether an acid is strong or weak. Because it either is one of these, and it's strong, or it's not one of these, therefore it's weak. Here are some of the many, 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 many weak acids. HF is one of them. But there are lots of different ones. Sometimes they have one H, one acidic H. Sometimes they have two acidic H's. Sometimes they have three acidic H's. So again, there are not many strong acids. There's only six. There are many, many, many weak acids. This is just some of them. So how do we find the pH of an acidic solution? Well, to find the pH of an acidic solution, we just solve the equation. P H equals negative log of H3O plus. So if I want to know what the pH of a solution is, then I need to know the H3O plus concentration of a solution. If an acid is a strong acid, then that's easy because the concentration of HA initial equals the concentration of H3O plus equilibrium for strong acids. So this is finding the pH of a strong acid, a solution of strong acid is really easy. The question will say, what is the pH of a one molar solution of HCl? Well, a one molar solution of HCl has one molar H3O plus so it's pH equals the negative log of 1, as how easy it would be to find the pH of a solution of a strong acid. So now, of course, it's not all that easy. How do we find the pH of a weak acid? Well, for strong acids, this is true. HA equals 
concentration of equilibrium for strong acids. But for weak acids, this is not true. For weak acids, if I have a one molar solution of a weak acid, that does not mean I have one molar H3O plus at equilibrium. Because remember, strong acids fall apart 100%. This will completely convert to this. Weak acids don't. This might fall apart 90% or 95% or 98% and make 2% H3O plus. How do I know to what percentage the acid is going to fall apart? I look at the equilibrium constant. Look at KEQ. KEQ is, tells me how much product and how much reactant do I have at equilibrium. So if strong acids completely turn into H3O+, I have zero reactant left and 100% product left at equilibrium, then what is, K, what is K equal for a strong acid? Well, it has 100% product and almost 0% reactant. That's what a strong acid is, right? Well, that is very, very large. Right? Because if I start off initially with 100% reactant and 0% product, but then at equilibrium I have 100% product and zero reactant, and K tells me what these are at equilibrium, then K equals 100 divided by zero, which is almost infinity, right? It's an incredibly large number. So strong acids have a really big equilibrium constant. Weak acids have a really small equilibrium constant. So how much HA, how much H3O plus do I get? when I put some amount of HA into solution, I need to do an ice table, just like we did in the last chapter. So whenever I'm trying to find the pH of a strong acid, that's easy. You just plug in the number right here, do this really easy calculation. When I'm trying to find the pH of a weak acid, I have to do a whole ice table. And after I do the whole ice table and I find X, then I can plug X into this equation and then find out what the pH is much harder for a weak acid, much harder for a weak base.